The first thing we have to realize is that Paul's ministry was a tough one. Just because Paul believed on the basis of scripture and the basis of the reality of the resurrection, the ascension, that the authority of the supernatural powers of darkness in all these places, these Gentile dominions, just because he believed that their authority had been taken away, doesn't mean they're leaving. Okay, they're going to fight for their turf. They're going to do all they can to blind the people who live under their charge to the gospel. They don't want to lose their worship. They enjoy enslaving their populations. They hate Yahweh. They hate God's people. The last thing they want is, is to lose their own subjects to the real king. Okay, they're going to continue to fight. This is why Paul talks about spiritual warfare. Okay, we battle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and rulers, you know, in the, in the heavenlies. Okay, it is a conflict. They're not dead yet. They're not destroyed yet. They will be, and they know it because of Psalm 82 and other passages. They know that. But Paul, again, has linked the coming of the kingdom and with it the day of the Lord in the end and the destruction of these supernatural beings. He's linked it in Romans, we just read the passage, to something called the fullness of the Gentiles. When the fullness of the Gentiles is brought in, then Israel will awaken and they'll, you know, all Israel will be saved. And that needs to happen too. That needs to happen too. So do you see what that means? Paul, in his, you know, again, biblical theology, links the success of the Great Commission to the return of the Lord, the day of the Lord, and the destruction, the final destruction of all the cosmic powers. So when I, when I get asked, what is spiritual warfare? Okay, it's not shouting at demons. Okay, it's not you know, these, these confrontational things that we think of with spiritual warfare, you spooky stuff, like we're ghostbusters or something, okay? It's not that. I mean, I've talked to plenty of missionaries and they have those episodes. And, and people over here too, they have these episodes. They're real and it could happen. But that is not the ultimate end game. It's not even the ultimate battle. It's not really even what it's about. What it's about, you just ask yourself a simple question. What do, if the principalities and powers and the rulers, the powers of darkness, if they, if they know this stuff, and by now they do because, you know, it, it's out in the open. What do they fear? What do they fear? They fear their own destruction, which means they fear the success of the Great Commission. Okay. Their game plan, you know, do they think they can win? Well, of course, they don't, they don't think they can beat the most high. They don't think they're going to kill him off. Okay, they're not idiots, all right? But what they do believe, what they do know, is that the longer we kick the Great Commission can down the road, as long the, the longer we blind people to the gospel, the longer it takes to reach whatever point this is, and only God knows when the fullness of the Gentiles is accomplished and Israel awakens, the longer we can keep that in the future, we survive. That's the game plan. That, that's how they are going to define victory. We're still here. And this is spiritual warfare. It is, it is focused on the Great Commission. So what I try to advise people is, look, I know spiritual warfare sounds sexy. Again, it be, and it's because of the way it's sort of been Hollywoodized and, and whatnot. And, and like, like, like it, would be, it would just be the, the highlight of our day to get into a conflict with a demon, okay? What the highlight of your day ought to be is winning somebody to the Lord. Okay, because that is what they fear. They don't fear getting kicked out of a room or, you know, I got to go possess somebody now or else, you know. No, what they fear is their own destruction. And the only thing that's going to lead to that is the success of the Great Commission. That is biblical theology. 